Good evening, my friends. How you doing? This is uh, Elder Leon Hatcher from the Inner Image Christian Ministries, where our pastors are Bishop Melvin E. Blake and Pastor Cheryl Blake. We just like to thank you guys for tuning in with us on tonight uh, to our Word Up Wednesday, entitled Just One Word, Just One Word, Just One Word. And my word tonight that I'll be dealing with is the word restore. Hope you caught that, the word restore. Or you might hear me sometimes shift a little bit and refer to it as the word restoration. But we'll get into that a little bit later as we continue to move forward in the process of our teaching on tonight. But we first of all would like to thank Bishop Blake and Pastor C for giving us this opportunity to share with you our listening audience on Facebook and YouTube or whatever media that you share and stand with us in agreement and come to glean on tonight. So we greet you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with Jesus joy. And one of the things that I wanna do as a uh, ground breaking on my, what you might hear me refer to as our hallmark scripture or our text on tonight that I often refer back to that when you think of the word restoration or the word restore, just one word, get that in your spirit, just one word. And that word is restore, uh, meaning right now it's going to happen. All right. And you're going to hear me refer to some other words to build up that word restore. But our hallmark scripture that we just want to kind of like lay the foundation work is uh, Joel, Joel, I apologize, Joel, the second ch chapter. And I'm going to look at verses 25 and 26 real quickly in your hearing and even in your reading, wherever you may be. And it reads, and it reads, and I want you to catch this. It starts off with the word and, and it says, and I will, here it goes, our key word, uh, that we're going to play on a lot tonight, I'll just one word, restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar. Here's that other word that links it all, ties some things back in. And the uh, palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And here it goes, ties back in, and ye shall not eat in plenty and be what? Satisfied and praise the name of our Lord, your God, that hath dealt wondrously with you. And, and there it goes again, and my people shall never be ashamed. Oh my God, we shall never be ashamed. Hope you caught that. As a result of God's restoration process, God's restorative work, we shall never be ashamed. So often, all throughout the scriptures, all throughout the word of God, you see both in the Old and the New Testament, you see how God constantly just has the restorative work or the restorative process going forth, meaning the Old Testament agrees, it connects what the old was doing to the new. You constantly see God's hand of uh, restoration, his restorative work at work whether it be through redemption, uh, you know, uh, go, we go back to the garden and, and, and man lost favor with God and, and fell because of sin, but God still had a work that he would do to restore back fellowship. And he began the process right there in the garden. It begun right after, after God had him acknowledge his sin, God began the process of restoration or restoring mankind. Oh my God. Even down to the sacrifice, God had already begun a good work, a good work to begin restoring mankind. As we move forward with this teaching of just one word, and that word tonight, as I stated, is restore, or another words uh, or, or that you'll hear me touch on in a few words that are considered to be what? conjunctions, like uh, you heard me uh, use in the scripture but that I laid out uh, in Joel 2.25 and 26, it used a lot of words like and. And one of the things that God did with this teaching, as he was even feeding me in my private time, 
words like restore and the words and that connected us to restoration, it forever changed how I look from this day forward at the word and and but. Oh my God, when you look in the scriptures. A conjunction, uh, if you will, uh, I'm not no English major, but a conjunction is a word or a group of words uh, coordinating con or co coordinating conjunctions, and they specifically connect words, phrases, clauses that are equal of equal importance importance in the sentence. You'll be able to tie all that in later as we continue to progress forward. Uh, uh, in my supporting text, it starts off by utilizing the word and, and, and I, uh, you know, and before we get too far, you know, even in, since we're talking about that just one word being re, uh, restore, my mind always goes to, you know, oftentimes we think of uh, uh, Psalm 51, where, where he says, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Even like I just told you how in Genesis, when mankind fell, God had begun a process when mankind acknowledged his sin, amen, because you can't hide anything from God. He acknowledged his sin. God began a process, a restorative work. And as a result, even in Psalms, you see David who, uh, who, 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 who confessed his sin as a result of Nathan bringing the word to him, letting him know that he had been caught in sin with Bathsheba. And when he finally acknowledged it and came face to face with the reality that he had fallen from grace, one of the things he says, because he definitely was a man after God's own heart, was he said, and he says, take not your joy away from me. Because David understood the importance of having God's hand, having God's covering, uh, uh, having, God, having constant fellowship with God. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In my supporting text, it starts off, I told you, by utilizing words like and. And I remember an English class I had from my professor, uh, one of my professors at the Maple Springs Bible College and Seminary. Her name was uh, 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 Felicia Buchanan Jones. And one of the things that she taught us in this class, which was new revelation to me, was you could start a sentence off with the word and. I was like, wow, you know, when you could start, much as I read, it never clicked. But 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 she said you could start a sentence off with the word and, and in some point, at some point, in some points, you can even start the word, the sentence off with the word but. You know, that's why even in scripture, sometimes you see sentences that starts off with therefore. What was what you know, therefore is therefore a reason. Uh, so that means there's some things that precede preceded before we got to therefore. So it's important for us to go back to what happened before so we understand the connecting point and reference of what it's there for. Oh, y'all will get that thing in a minute. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was something that came before we arrived at the phrase or point of statement of carrying on one's discussion like I talked about. And that word is and. Well, in, in, in which uh, Joel 2, 23 through 24, it reads, be glad huh, then, and ye children of Zion, meaning the church, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain, moderately, and he will cause, the, cause uh, it to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain and the first month. Oh my God. And the floors shall be full of wheat. Oh my God. It started messing with me even this morning while I was uh, listening to the news in the background and they were talking about wheat being associated even over there in Ukraine and how it's important to us being able to produce bread and different things and how much wheat is being held up because of what's going on over there. I was like, oh my God, this, this thing is bigger than what we're really paying attention to. This got some biblical implications to it. 
And he says in the scriptures, and the fats, their fats shall overflow. I want you to catch this because one of the things that God is always about, God told you about a restorative work. One of the things that God is about and always about is he, he's progressively, whenever something happens before, uh, when he gets into his therefore stage, in, in the next phase of it, when he begins to, that just one word, restore some things, he usually gives you more than you had before. Oh my God. Oh, y'all gonna get this thing in the morning. I know I sound like a rapper right now. Therefore, before he, but he usually gives you some things more than what you had before. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Bishop just got finished talking about in Job. Uh, you know, you know, and one of the things Job had to get to a place was Job had to get to a place where he began had to stop focusing in on his uh calamity, if you will. Huh. What he had lost. And a lot of the reasons of what he had lost was because of fear. And you probably heard me talk in some of the preceding teachings uh, that came before this is fear and faith don't work together. And we got to operate in faith in this season. I, I know I know the economy is all out of whack, but the, it's supposed to be a failing economy. So don't, don't you get out of whack. Because God's ability to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we could ever ask or think is always going to be at work because God has his hand on us as children of God. Oh, my God. The word says we will lack no good thing. You got to get that thing in your spirit. Yeah, there's going to be some tight times there maybe, but Paul reminded us in the word of God, he says, in whatsoever state I'm in, I've got to learn to be content. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so he says uh, this word restore and he, he deals with Job. When Job got to a place of dealing, getting past all of what his wife talked about, what his friends was doing to him, all of that. Finally, he said, but yet I will trust him. Use that word, but yet. And guess what happens? Instantly, restoration comes back. Nobody wants to lose family, but that did happen in Job's case. Nobody wants to lose things, but that did happen in Job's case. Nobody wants to lose all these things. And as you see, Job went through some things just like me and you. He, he, he was, he, 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 he carried, they, they talked about he sat in sackcloth and ashes and all that stuff, you know, so he, he, he had a, he had a downtrodden spirit for a season, if you will, but he came to himself and said, but yet will I trust him, and instantly or immediately, if you will, God's hand begins to do the restorative work, and he now increases and gets more family than before, and more things than he had before. Because what Job finally got to was he got to a place where he understood in order for this kingdom principle to really go forth and work, he had to trust God by faith. He had to trust God by faith. Oh my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Restoration, uh, I remember, y'all probably remember it, the wine. Maybe I didn't even look up the uh, year of the song, but it was probably in the 90s. They made a song saying that restoration has finally come. Oh my God. Restoration has finally come. And I know that there's many of us that can stand in agreement that in the midst of everything that goes on or is going on, because of our faith, God is yet still at work and restoring some things on our behalf. He said, you'll lack no good thing. And those are the kind of promises. Those are, those are the kind of things that we've got to stand on. And we got to gird our loins up, the word says, with truth. Huh. We got to get it in our spirit. We got to get it in our knower. Huh. So the teacher can reveal uh, and, and tie our faith to what he's going to do. And what he's going to do, Hatch, that thing that he's going to do is he's going to restore. Why? Because what of your faithfulness? 
Oh my God. Because of your faithfulness, because you've been full of faith. And as a result of your fullness of faith, he's going to overflow in you and bring forth his promises. And the word says, and they are what? Yea and amen. Oh my God. And why he's going to do all of this, my friend? Because of our faith. You get it now? We got to have what I call a now is moment. Oh my God. Uh, I'm sorry, a now faith is moment. That's what we got to get. Say it to yourself. Hit yourself on the chest. I've got to get a now is moment. And what is going to happen in that now is moment? I know it don't sound like correct English, but I ain't trying to be no English scholar right now. I'm just trying to give you the word of God so you can run and not grow weary and well do in well uh, in due season. You shall reap if you faint not. Oh my God. And that's what we got to get because God says uh, in order for us to stand the test of a storm, we've got to ha uh, have a good sound foundation. And the word of God says, if you allow me to just paraphrase it, it talks about how because of that found sound foundation that when the storm comes, uh, it won't be no fault. But the, you know, break will be the fall of it. It talks about in that word. Oh, my God. But when the storm comes, it's going to stand. I'm reminded in Psalm 1, it talks about how the trees of Lebanon, yeah, it might bend a little bit, but one thing about them trees, that particular tree, it, 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 it embraces it back self, itself up, and it pops back up, and it doesn't snap. Oh, my God. Y'all going to get this thing in a minute. My God, so many things we can glean if we just develop a serious closeness and foundation with the word of God. We, we, he says it has to be a light unto our path, a lamp. Huh? We got to knock and the door shall be open unto us. That's all in the faith move of God. Uh, because our faith and our trust is in the fact that God will restore. He says, and just in that one word, and I will restore. As I continue uh, to lay some groundwork, Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14, he states, for I know the thoughts. Oh my God. Catch this. Key word. Thoughts. Uh, yeah, he, he got some thoughts on his mind because of us. Uh, uh, and, and, and this restorative process, this process of restoration, this process of restoring, whether it be past, future, present. Oh my God. God is at work in all of those unbeknownst to us. Uh, he says some thoughts. He says, what, what kind of thoughts I got? He says, I got thoughts that I think towards you. So he shifts from thought to thinking. Oh my God. So he's letting us know that his thoughts that he thinks are incomprehensible. They are everlasting. They're not like our thoughts where they can easily be distracted, if you will, or, 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 or we can lose focus. God is always focused on us, and he's definitely focused on those that love him. And the word says, and love his appearance. Let me get back to that uh, word in Jeremiah 29. Thoughts that I think. He says, who are you thinking them to? Towards you. That's me and you, my friend. Which saith the Lord. Here it goes again. What kind of thoughts do you think? Thoughts of peace. Keyword peace. And is that word? I told you that forever changed me. And not of evil shall ye go and pray unto me. And I love some prayer. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Oh my God, there's that word. And and pray, he says, then, oh my God, uh, if you let me insert in, therefore, he says, uh, he says, he said, if my people who call by my name shall humble themselves and pray, he says, then will I hear, I'll hear from heaven uh, and I'll heal the land. Uh, oh my God, Rest restoration, restore. Just one word, get it in your spirit. God is gonna do some things 
but you got to keep trusting them, my friend. God is going to do some things. Because why? He's got thoughts that he's thinking towards us. And he says, then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. And there's that word. And I will hearken unto you. Here's that word coming again. And ye shall see me. Oh, my God. And that's why the word of God says, he says, he says, he says, he says, seek me. Sometimes I insert a scripture within a scripture. Oh, my God. That's what just happened. It's only by, but by the Holy Spirit. He says, he says, he says, seek me and ye shall find me. The word says, those that hunger and thirst. Oh, there's that word again. And, and thirst shall. Be filled. Oh, my. Sound like some restoration going on in there, too. He says, and ye shall find me. He ain't hiding from us. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. And you will be found. I will be found of you, said the Lord. Oh, my God. I hope you're catching all those hands. So when you get a chance, get your, if you got an uh, old-fashioned Bible, get it out and highlight that word, and. Or if you got some note paper uh, and you write that scripture down, just hit all the names because restoration is all at work. And he says, I will turn away your captivity. Sounds like restoration in play, y'all. Some restorative work is in play. Because why? God is a progressive God. He progressively moves forward. He's always in forward movement. Mm, 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 mm. Whether from the nations and from all places, whether I have driven you, saith the Lord, is that word, and I will bring you back again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Hmm. So God even has a, uh, 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 a clause in the contract. It's called covenant. It's called covenant agreement. He has a clause in the contract that if we confess our sins, the word says, and he is faithful to forgive us our sins. Oh my God, sounds like restore going on. Sounds like restoration right there. But see, the enemy doesn't want us to take full advantage. He doesn't want us to recognize all these things that are available to us. Because if we recognize that, if we, if we don't get to recognize them, we'll never take full advantage of them. It's like having access to five levels and all you ever do is stay on the first, second, and third level. You never know what's up on the fourth and fifth level because you never went up. And there's so much, so many more uh, levels in God that he wants to take us to, but we got to give of ourselves. That's why uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, one of my favorite scriptures says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice and be holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But he says, but be ye, is that, but be ye, but be ye transformed, what? by the renewing of your mind. That's why it has to be a constant fellowship, an ongoing dialogue, a constant giving of ourselves uh, to study and uh, our application of the word of God, whereby we can grow in the things of God and God can have his way and use us to his glory. Mm, mm, mm. And the word restore, huh, which is just one word, I hear you, Pastor C. Whether it be in the present tense, the past tense, the future tense, restore, restore, restoration, and or restoring. God is doing such a thing, I told you, to them that love him. Because he wants to show you off to the world. He said in the word of God that the world doesn't know him. The world doesn't comprehend him. But the mysteries of God, he's going to reveal to you and I. Oh, my God. He says, serve him and seek him. 
Just let's just get a butt day. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But they that wait upon the Lord in our spirits. Uh, Isaiah 40 and 31 declares, but they that wait upon the Lord, what they should do, Hatch, they shall renew, oh my God, their strength. Sounds like some restoration in play, don't it? They should what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Uh, but there's some things we got to do. He says, but they that wait upon the Lord. So you got to first wait upon the Lord. Then the restoration comes forth and they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And here's that word. Uh, and not be weary. And they shall walk and not, there's it again, and what? Not faint. Oh my God, I hope you see the richness and the fruit of all of what's going on, right? Just right there in Isaiah 40 and 31. Then in Galatians, Galatians, however you want to say it, uh, 6 and 9 declares, I told you, and changed my life. When I start looking at it from the standpoint of being restored or being uh, 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 restored, uh, yeah, 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 which means to put back in place, oh my God. Something that which was, but now which is, oh, or ever, or in other words, which is to come. Oh my God! I told you different tenses. Which was, which is, and which is to come. He says, and be uh, let us not be weary in well doing. Why? For in due season, we shall do what, family? Reap if we faint not. Can I pause right there? <laughs> Can I put a pause right there? And we shall reap if we faint not. I hope you're getting it by now. God is leading us to a few conjunctive type of words, and which leads us to great revelation of blessings and but, which suggests no matter what God is. What is going on, God will restore. No matter what is going on, oh, oh, I, if I got to repeat it three times, I want you to get this and catch this in your spiritual glove. Throw your hand out and catch this thing. And I will restore. However it comes. I, I, I remember as a child, we had a, a neighborhood, uh, a gentleman who, who, who looked out for us, Mr. Ted. And Mr. Ted was the one that taught me how to play uh, catch with a ball. And he gave me a glove even when I didn't have a glove. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope you catch that thing. And he, and, 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 and he had a nickname for me, but I ain't going to share it with you. But, but, but he would tell me to put that hand up in the glove. And when he throw the ball, catch it. Then when I got that principle down, he taught me how to, if the ball rolled up off the ground, how to put my glove down on the ground and still catch the ball and not let it get past me. So whatever, what, what are you saying all that for, Hatch? What I'm saying all that for tonight is, beloved, is that no matter whichever way it comes, God is going to throw some things back at you. Uh, you just catch it in your nose. Huh. He's going to roll it, whether he roll it. Uh, Pastor C always said roll it and fold it. Now that's Bishop, roll it and fold it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 whether he, he rolls it, whether he throws it, God is going to, what one word, just one word, restore. So why are you discomforted, my friend? Have faith in God and not fear in God. Huh. If you're going to have fear, have the kind of fear in God, hope you catch that, uh, have the kind of fear in God whereby you reverence him. Will you fall in submission to him? Where your worship begins to really comprehend his, his worthness, if you will. I just made up a word. You know, I'm going to get you at least one time. I'm going to make up a word. Uh, so you understand the full value and totality of who God is, who God was, and who God is going to become to us in the life 
there, which is, which was, and which is to come. Oh my God, pat yourself on the back. Which is, which was, and which is to come. My God, the restorative process. Restoration goes hand in hand. Ball and glove spiritually with faith. You know, my hallmark scripture that I love when I began to talk about faith, because I could spend weeks talking about faith uh, because that's what God began to do with me in this season of restoration in my life as he continued to restore things all throughout my life. Hebrews 11 and one reads, now faith is, <laughs> yeah, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Then I love the Holy Scripture as one of many hallmarks of scriptures concerning faith in Romans 4.20, which says, he staggered not at the promise of God through what? Unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And that's what we got to be. I'm tying in something I said earlier. We, we, we can't stagger at the promise. God has made some promises. And one of the promises that he talks about throughout the word of God, he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He says, I've come that you might have life and might have it more abundantly. Oh, why? Because all because of restoration. And a part of his restoration or restorative work process ties into redemption. Oh my God which he had to do for us, and he brought us back with what? The ultimate sacrifice, which was giving of his life. Now, some key words he didn't, he did was, he didn't stagger. Huh. And you probably, you, you know, come on, y'all. I, you know, I grew up in, in Southeast, and from time to time, we saw somebody was, uh, the, you know, good word to say is a little inebriated. But, but, but the real word for it is it was just drunk. <laughs> but the reason I give you that is from time to time when you get drunk or got drunk, I'm hoping you're more in the got phase and not in the getting drunk phase, but whether or not uh, God says he staggered not. And one of the things that's associated with drunkness is staggering. But Abraham or Abram, if you will, in this case, he, he did not stagger at the promise but was standing upright, sure in the faith of the promise because he believed, Abraham that is, the promise promise of being pointed back to being restored. Oh my God. And the word of God talks about in James because a double-minded man will be unstable in all his ways. And I told you earlier, faith and fear can't abide together. Huh. In Revelation, it talks about you can't be neither hot nor cold. And he associates that with being what? Lukewarm. And he says the fruit of it or the result of it will be he's going to spew you out of his mouth. God wants to do what I told you earlier. And that is be full of faith so that people can see and he can show us all to the glory of God through the restorative works that he's going to do in our lives. I already hit uh, Psalm 51 and 12 where it talks about restoring to me the joy of salvation and, 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 and uphold me with thy free spirit. Hmm. A great word of revelation was trans, uh, uh, transgressed because God is always willing and able to restore us. Can't, hope you catch that. Because in Joel, he talks about, he says he's going to restore us to the place he's driven us out of and put us back and bring us back from what? Our captivity. Oh. And sometimes these things happen. Or, or they, God allows them to happen, if you will, 
because of what? Our unfaithfulness. Ooh. I remember mom and them, they, they, they used to just let us sometimes, they'll let you just bump your head. Okay, you ain't get it? I'm going to let you bump your head a couple of times. And then eventually you'll get it. David is caught in sin, delivered of sin, and restored to his rightful place. Hope you caught that. He's caught in sin, delivered of sin, and restored to his rightful place in God. Why is he restored? He confessed his sin. And God did just what his word said he would do. He's faithful and just to forgive him of his sin. Uh, and that's why you see David being referred to in the book of Acts as a man that was after God's own heart. I don't know about you, but that's what I want them to be able to say about me. There's some things I might miss from a world standpoint, but I really haven't missed it. Because the word of God says that if I lose my life, I shall find my life. And I've had a pretty good life, not to brag, but God said you got to walk, uh, in, in, in the New Testament, he talks about how you got to walk boldly and confidently in some things. And there's one thing that I'm confidently and boldly assured of is that God loves me and he's constantly got his hands on me and as a result, I'm willing to sacrifice and let lose no good thing. Because he says he will, with, he will not withhold any good thing to them that love him. And that's a part of this word called restore, just one word. That's a part of the restorative process. God is still at work, my friend, because his times are according to our time. He says, no man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. He's going to come like a thief in the night. A thief don't let you know he's coming. He just come up on you. Hope you get this. Uh, so somebody tonight, you might be sick in your body, but God is going to restore some things. God is going to restore some things. One of the things in the scriptures, it talks about how Jesus was the fulfillment of the law. He was, he, he was a grace at work. Oh, my God. He was a part of the unmerited faith process, a merited favor process. Are we saved? Why? Because of our faith. John 9, 1 through 7 reads, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Here's that word. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Because it was believed in biblical times if something like that occurred, it was because somebody sinned. Jesus' answer said, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made, key word, made manifest in him. Uh, made uh, manifest, which ties us back to our just one word. And that is that he might be restored, oh my God, or restore his sight. Hmm. Restoration. He says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground made the clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay and said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Sound, and that sounds crazy. I'm like, come on, Jesus, you done, you done spat on the ground, you done put mud, put some mud stuff together. 
You put a healing balm, now you just put them on my eyes, and then you're going to tell me, go wash? Well, be, you got to have some obedience. Uh, he says, and the uh, washing the pool of uh, Shalom, which is by interpretation, sent. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sent. I hope you catch that. He went his way, therefore, and washed. And guess what happened? The fruit of his obedience, the restoration, the restorative work, the restored, that just one word, oh my God, it came to pass. And you've been hearing me say for about a year or so, and it shall come to pass. Why? Because he was obedient in the faith. And I told you earlier, and his promises are yea and amen. Now let me go to another scripture. Matthew 9, 9 through 13. And it talks about a man with a withered hand, how his withered hand was restored. And when he was departed this, he went into their synagogue and behold, there was a man which had in hand with it. And he asked him saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day that they might assess him or accuse him, you know, they're trying to trap him. But, oh my God, here you go. And he said unto them, what a man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if he fall into a pit, Jesus had to catch them right where they were. On the Sabbath day, because he said, I hear your reason. <laughs> yeah, and he that lay hold on his, lay hold on it and lift it up out, how much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then he saith unto man, saith unto the man, stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it forth. And guess what happens, friends? It's restored. Restoration oh, has finally come. And it was restored, restored, I said restored, uh, whatever I said, yeah, yeah. But it was restored whole uh, as the other. Notice in both the scriptures, Jesus responds as he is the fulfillment of the law and the words of grace and healing, and he utilizes the word and heavily with authority. Now, uh, we come into a close. We done rounded the bend. Here's the woman with the issue of blood in Luke 8, 40 through through 8. And it starts off the scripture by reading, and a woman having the issue of blood. How long she had it? 12 long years, hmm. which has spent all of her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him. Hmm. Why? Because of her faith. Oh my God. She didn't stagger at the promise that she believed God could restore her, could heal her, and she touched the border of his garment. And here it goes, y'all. And immediately, and immediately, and immediately, oh my God, her issue of blood stenched. King James stopped. She was healed. She was restored. Restorative work took place. Sometimes faith will bring us from behind of sorts, as if we are losing only to result in a mighty move of God experience. If we react and move in faith, we will win and experience and then immediately experience. Why? Because of faith. And we'll begin to see the promise of God, promises of God, and restoration come together. Oh, my God. Since we opened up with Job as our foundational textual scripture, i like to close with Job. In Job 2.28, and it shall come to pass afterward, he says, I will pour out my spirit. 
Let me have a Selah moment, a pause for a second. He said, I will pour out my flesh. Restoration at work, y'all. And, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Hmm. Oh, my God. As I told you, I was forever changed concerning the word and. I was forever changed concerning just that one word, restore. Or restore. Oh, my God. And God stopped to use me tonight to let you know somebody's being restored. You just got to trust in God and not lean to thine own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct that pass. So in other words, it shall come to pass. That's why the word of God says, knock and the door shall be open. Oh my God. Ask and ye shall receive. Oh my God. Talk about them promises. Knock, ask, open, receive. Sounds like restoration. And God will get the glory for the things he's done and is doing. There are some things that God will be restoring or restoring our lives and they will come and come to pass and be manifest. You will see manifestation at work in us because our trust of him, because of our love for him, because of our faithfulness unto him. It's a kingdom principle. It has to go to work and it shall come to pass. It will. God's going to perform. Why? Because I yet trusted in him. Oh my God. Because I yet trusted in him. So my friends, beloved, don't grow weary in wealth's doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. And I told you earlier, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not faint. Huh. All of that stuff. They shall run and not weary, get weary. And, and then, then it talked about in our right hallmark text that we laid out to you. And he says, I will restore. He talks about the caterpillar. He talks about the canker worm. He talks about three different variances that he's going at all levels, restore us at any cost. Because he's going to show that he loves us. He's going to fulfill his promises in us and through us. Why? But for the glory of God. And it shall come to pass. Our restoration, our restoring, our restore, if you will, shall come to pass if we just yet trust him and if we just yet believe on him. Just keep waiting and it's going to come to pass. God bless you for tuning in tonight. I hope you gleaned some things. And again, I'm grateful to be able to have share it with you. You're always available to be invited to In His Image Christian Ministries. We have both in-person and online worship or the virtual experience. And we can be found as you found us tonight on In His Image Christian Ministries on Facebook, on YouTube. You can find us on IHICM, what we shorten and call IHICM TV, IHICM TV. On Wednesday nights, right now at 7.30. And on Sunday mornings, we're ready to be live again at 11 o'clock. So if you 
We would love to have you be a part of our ministry, be a part of our experience or what we call the Ahikam experience and grow and go with us in the things of God as God continues to restore his things that he's promised to do for us. Why? Because we love him and we're made in his image. As I told you, our pastors are Bishop Belby E. Blake Jr. and Pastor Cheryl B. Blake. Uh, we're located at 7343 Old Alexander Ferry Road, Clinton, Maryland, 20735. And as, as we close out, you're going to see on the screen uh, some ways that you can give to support the work that we're doing because we are about a good work and we're going to do some great things. So trust us with your giving and we, and we, we pray that we can help disciple you and, and lead you to the things that God has promised to you. Let's close out real quick in a word of prayer and we're going to release you tonight and give you back some of your time. He says, and Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this teaching. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for what you're doing yet in our lives. We love you. We praise you. And God, fulfill your promises in your people's lives. God, grow them up in the faith. Make them strong. Allow them not to grow weary in their well-doing. We love you. We praise you. And we honor you. And it's in Jesus' name we say amen. God bless you. Enjoy your night. And we love you. Be blessed.